Today we're going to create smooth blends on the Night Desecrator's Carapace. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connecting to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the channel, Collectors. So today we are going to be using the overbrush technique to paint the Night Desecrator's Carapace. This video is part of a greater series where I use the overbrush technique to quickly paint out a Night Desecrator so hopefully I can play a game of Warhammer 40k before the 20th edition comes up. The technique we'll be using for this series will be the overbrushing technique and if you need a recap on the overbrushing technique, you can check out the video right here. So if you are ready to paint the Night Desecrator Carapace, let us begin. Alright, so we have the carapace. We're going to do the entire carapace in the same style. So this is uh, currently primed in Krylon Brown and we're going to do a stipple of Dark Sea Blue. Uh, we are doing this uh, overbrush stipple style. Uh, if you are not sure on how we have done this overbrush technique, please check out the overbrush technique video in the link in the description. Uh, then watch this video. This will make the entire video a lot more educational and you can follow along right here. Alright, this really shows how, how smooth overbrushing can be. And as you guys can see, this is just an overbrush of Vallejo model color C blue over a brown Krylon Prime to create the initial colors. At this stage, you will try to avoid the metallic trims but however if you do paint into the metallic trims that's fine too because we're going to do a cover up later okay so moving on we're going to add in a little bit of Vallejo model color few blue to the sea, dark sea blue and we're going to do a selective uh, stipple right here as you guys can see in this selective stipple I'm placing the highlight where the, the, the highlight would be if it was having a top right High, uh, lighting, Rembrandt lighting. So this is the right hand carapace and I'm currently placing the highlights on the top side. All right. So as, as you guys can see, you want to be mixing a little bit of field blue into the dark sea blue to create a really smooth transition. What is really important is you got to make sure that the brush is slightly moist. All right. This moistness actually uh, improves the, the blend and as you guys can see I'm moving on to a pure uh, few blue right here as one of the highlights and creating a mid-tone as you guys can see this stipple technique is to create sort of like this mortared armored look So with pure, with pure few blue, you, as you guys can see, the highlight has already been placed in. However, the highlight looks a little bit stuck and we'll be using a little bit of dark sea green, a dark sea blue to blend down the highlights right here. So just testing the colors, making sure that the colors are great before we move on. So right here, I'm adding in more and more few blue to create the highest highlights so you want to be picking up some of the little details and in this color I've added in a little bit of pale grey blue to really pick up some of the more finer details on this as you guys can see the transition isn't exactly smooth right now and we'll be using the intermediate colors, adding in a little bit of few blue to blend in the transitions right here. So as you guys can see, this stippling technique, uh, this overbrush stippling technique, it's a very back and forth process. There's no fixed order of the color. If you feel that the transition is not smooth enough, Always just go back to the previous color, stipple a little bit, add a little bit of water to create sort of like a stipple glaze. And you can create really, really epic smooth transitions even if you don't have an airbrush. The best part is you don't need to use an airbrush to create smooth transitions like this. 
And because it's not painted by a machine, it doesn't look like it's painted by a machine. So just going with an overall stipple of few blue, sort of like to glaze over the entire transition to create a smooth finish right here. So with the same technique, I'm also doing this to the little uh, uh, shin armor plates. So why we include this? Uh, why we included this component here is because I want you to see that we can even create smaller highlights right here. So we can create smaller highlights in the in a vertical line. So for this armor plate, what we are doing is we are trying to immediate black. And the color scheme that we are using is dark sea blue and without few blue we're just jumping straight to we're just jumping straight to pale blue gray to create this this uh this black highlight color so with a smaller brush we want to stipple a, a more sharp highlight to create this to create a distinction between dark blue and black Okay, now back to the carapace, we are going to create a bone white highlight. Currently what I am going to do is, I am going to be stippling on raw umber. This raw umber from Jo Sonia, I find it as a pretty neutral brown, it is not too warm, not too cold. This will be the initial stipple and we are going to add in Vallejo model colour VMC Stone Grey. So with stone grey with uh, raw umber, we are going to start with the initial highlights. We want to make sure this initial highlight is as large as possible. However, we want to make sure it's smooth. So please remember, 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 make sure the brush is slightly moist. You want to do this in a stipple technique and you want to focus more towards the highlight. So you start building more and more layers towards the, the highlight area. So adding more and more Vallejo model color stone grey, we are adding an extreme highlight here. Make sure that this is pretty large. So one area of improvement I would say is that I feel that uh, we could have made the change a little bit more gradual. By making the change more gradual, the, the transition would have been a lot smoother. However, since we have directly added in the, the stone grey, we are stapling from the middle outwards so because there's less and less paint uh, the, the, the transition is going to be less and less opaque and what's happening is that we get a natural transition so this is another way to create a transition just go from the highlight all the way, all the way to the shadow okay with more stone grey Vallejo Mother Color Stone Grey we are stapling on thicker layers to create a more opaque coverage of this so as you guys can see I'm painting the this uh, Chaos Knight in the colors of House Lucaris. House Lucaris has uh, this bone grey uh, carapace on the on his right shoulder plate. And yeah. So using another stipple of Leo Home Water Color Stone Grey, I'm just gradually adding on the opacity to make sure that this looks as bone grey as uh, bone white as possible. You will see that the result is really smooth and you don't really need an airbrush after this. Okay, now just gradually adding in very very little amounts of Vallejo Model Color Ivory. We are making the staple slightly more highlightish. But do note that you don't want to add too much of this because you will make the transition look kind of rough. So as you guys can see, just a little bit of Vallejo Model Color Ivory is enough. I would say this is really just a touch and not significant amounts have been added in to this highlight. 
in just a little bit i'll show you the final result and you guys can see how smooth you can get transitions even without an airbrush using this overbrush technique Just look at this, so smooth. What do you think about the Night Desecrator carapace? Let me know in the comments below. Are there any other things that you would like to see me paint? Also just comment below. In the next video, we'll be covering how to paint non-metallic metal copper using this overbrush technique and I hope to catch you then. I'd like to take this time to thank my patrons for allowing me to do this. It's only through the support of my patrons that I am able to record videos and produce these awesome tutorials so that we can become better miniature painters together. The exclusive Patreon video for this series will be Non-Metallic Metal Go using the overbrush technique and should check it out on my Patreon right now. However, if you can't become a patron, that's okay too. I'd like to appreciate you for watching all the way to the end and if you could, just click the like and subscribe button and leave a comment because it really helps the channel and it helps me a lot. And I hope to see you in the next video. See you.